Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. And gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound, please. So while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So bring your attention to your body, please, and observe head to toes yourself and say, So Pateva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. Following my words, mentally relax your body, please. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. And relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles.
relax your teeth relax your tongue relax your mouth relax your throat relax your neck relax your shoulders relax your arms relax your elbow forearms palms fingers fingertips Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your gallbladder, relax your pancreas, relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. So bring attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And now allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens, just 
recognize it, inhalation as inhalation, exhalation as exhalation through the sensation of it. So don't interfere yourself for its natural process. Don't have any kind of conversation yourself. Just observe and recognize. Let everything to settle down itself. So keep your attention to the sensation of the inhalation and exhalation. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. So be disciplined yourself to be very limited only to the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation. Follow the entire continuation of the inhalation and exhalation. Knowingly, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. And see the entire continuation of the inhalation or exhalation. See the whole breath body from beginning to end.
Some inhalation exhalations may become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize it. So each and every inhalation and exhalation is unique. And just see that nature. Calming down your body inhalation happens, calming down your body exhalation happens. Calming down your mind inhalation happens, calming down your mind exhalation happens. Calming down your inhalation itself inhalation happens, calming down your exhalation itself exhalation happens. So now bring attention only to the change happening moment by moment and just recognize it. Don't follow any patterns, methods, concept. Simply see the sensation and change happening moment by moment. Within the object and the observer within primary or ob mental object and within your awareness, within subject and both, object and both, moment by moment, changing each other. You are itself mean your form, feeling, perception, volition or the mental formation and the recognition. There is nothing else. So when any sensation happens, it's all five aggregates happening and changing.
Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light. Through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so pray low strong. Tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible. Near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. into your left side. To your right side. Downward. And upward.
to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, so today is the Father's Day, and I wish upon all the fathers to a happy, a happy Father's Day, and at the same time, as children, we all are. have our nourishment, our energy from our parents. And uh, at the same time, we are so blessed to be human in this world and experience this life. You all have, you all experience this life because of your parents. And you have no idea how hard their life and how how difficult were at that time they gave this all the facilities to you so today we have a lot of this consumer product machines technology medicine or most of pharmaceutical product that with we have a lot of things today we cannot imagine even but if you look 10 20 years back your parents didn't have this anything. So today, most of the children, it's kind of like a machine made. Why? Because mostly they follow the YouTube and uh, they have friends on Facebook. And uh, so they have this and they always with the video games and parents also so comfortable with that. It's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you have to remember your parents, you are handmade by hand they made you so when it come to the father especially you have to remember like this earth depend on from the sun you are always have the protection the energy and the facilitated by your father and uh, even though you accumulate all these material things around the world and put it to one place and tell your father, okay, take this all. And now enough that whatever you have done to me, I fear for you. So like that, even you gather this all the material world, still you cannot compare it to so whatever the, your father gave to you. So then always remember that all the blood that you carry in your body came from your father. 
That's why you always each and every child get the their name from the father because blood related to father. Heartbeat you get from your mother and the, the blood you get from your father. And as we know nowadays, look, this all the immunity depend on the strength of the blood. So that your father gave you the strength. So then every day you have to remember, it is just not only giving life. Behind this life it, that they gave you the energy and they gave you their blueprint to you. And always you have to remember when you have any success in your life to remind your parents and appreciate, pay your gratitude. And at the same time, if there are any failures come to you, remind them and you have to get motivate and courageous yourself and strengthen yourself reminding your parents. Why? Because when the parents gave this life to you, they always have has the wish and they always had the hopes on you. One day, may my children will be success. One day, may this child will be happy. So they had that wish, that the wish on you, hopes on you. So then you have to remember every day, wherever you go, whatever you do in this conventional life. And you have some responsibilities. Why, if you suffer, in any in any ways, what whatever the if you suffer, remember. Maybe it it will be difficult for you, but it's going to be more difficult for your fair parents if you suffer. Maybe even you don't care yourself, but it always your parents think about you. So then it is one way that you can give the peace to them, happiness to them. When you take care of yourself, your life, maintain your life in a good way. Why? Because then your parents, wherever they are, seeing you and they will be happy. And at the same time, you have to remember that even in the spiritual world, Buddha is our father and he guided us and whatever he taught us. And same like that your father gave the life to you and take care of you and taught you what is right, what is wrong and according to their capacity. So Buddha is our spiritual father and he gave all the best for us. So then you no need to afraid for anything. So whatever the success and whatever the failure comes to you and always you have to reflect on Buddha and you have to get the example, not just praying and asking for the help. You have to get the example out of the, the strength and the courage, determination, how he overtook this, all the difficulties. And you also have that same courage, strength, capability. When you say Buddha Saranang Chami, so you promise yourself, determine yourself to follow that path. So then you get the example out of the, the Buddha. And the, the Buddha is one who had the great compassion. And he saw how these things happening. And sometimes as children, we don't listen that much. But when we get the lesson ourselves, we, we, we understand. 
and how right he was. And the same like our in, in the conventional life, sometimes our parents taught us many things. We don't care about it. But when you become a father, when you get old, you start to think about your parents and you reflect on their words and understanding and uh, thinking yourself and whatever the, the very simple things may be, they taught you how valuable it is. So in the spiritual life also the same. Sometimes very simple things, what the Buddha taught us in this sansaric journey, it will protect you from any kind of difficulties. And the Buddha is the one who respect to the, the parents to the highest level. And the Buddha is the one who gave the same respect and veneration to the parents, same like the Buddha. Many, many occasions, in many occasions, Buddha explained the value of parents and, the, and how you have to respect to the, the parents. So even that maybe you have no opportunity to find the physically, the physical Buddha. But still, the, what the Buddha said, if you take care of your parents, and it's same like you take care of the Buddha. If you respect to the parents, and if you venerate your parents, it's same like you do it to the Buddha. See, what else? That is the highest appreciation that what the Buddha gave to the, the parents. And not only that, when he visited his hometown, and at that time, his, the, 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 the Prince Siddhartha's son, Prince Rahula, used to live with the, the grandfather, King Suddhodana, who was the Prince Siddhartha's father. And then that day, then what happened? The, this Prince Rahula became a monk. And Prince, the, the King Suddhodana was so disappointed and went to the Buddha and had an argument and told the Buddha, you have no idea the love about the child in the parent's heart. And he blamed, blamed in many ways. And he told it's all over this body. And through the blood, through the muscles, through the bones, bone marrows, through all this body, this love regarding the sun, it's everywhere. And then the, the, the king Suddhodana told, don't this anymore without asking from any parents. So Buddha accepted that as paying respect to his father. And then he included one disciplinary code that uh, to the community of the Sangha. If someone come to the community of Sangha, if he's not an elder, like uh, 18 years, 20 years, 21 years old, elder, young boy, he always need the, the permission from parents. If parents don't agree, and he cannot become a monk. So, from it, because he did it to pay the respect to the father and he understood. And, and at the same time, in, in the spiritual world, and he had the great compassion, when it come to your parents, remember, and sometimes you may think, oh, he didn't love me this much, he didn't do for this much, so like that you compare according to your mind. But when it comes to parents, and if you are a father, you know, when in the family, two, three children, five children, sometimes in family, six, seven, ten, 
children and they don't have this kind of favor they always do their best to each and everyone so same like they did the best for you and the buddha the same buddha didn't have any favor to anybody and he always did the best to each and everyone and even he left the best for all of us to learn practice ourselves and gain and so that he reached to the highest and attained to the buddhahood and he saw the path each and anybody come to this community of the the buddha's dispensation and that person can reach to the that level of highest gain the buddhahood so then remember yourself in the conventional life you always have to be a better than the your parents you know always remember that if you are a son you always have to be the better than your father that's in the conventional life if you are a mother you always have to be a better than your mother but in the spiritual world try to be same like the the buddha at least try to gain the the wisdom and reach to the highest level and attain to the arahant so and that way you fulfill your both journeys your conventional life and at the same time your spiritual path but sometimes as children we don't listen that way and it happened even in the during buddha's time there was buddha and there was another monk so they had a journey and go through a village and then there was a junction in that so when that the buddha came to that junction and buddha stopped there and it was kind of like a four five junk roads go to different directions so the buddha stopped there and there was a little tree so under that tree and he just rest a little bit so then the monks and out of that the group of monks there was some one monk came and told oh bande oh venerable sir we should go this way i know this road very well i know where i go we should go this way and the buddha said no 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 this is not the time to go this way and this monk used to argue with the buddha and the buddha said no this is not the time to go this way this road to take this road just wait a little bit and but this monk didn't give you know give up his argument he was arguing 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 with the buddha buddha said no wait a little bit don't go this way maybe you know this road you know where i'd go but don't don't go just wait and he said no 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 i want to go this way and then what happened this monk himself you know even leaving the buddha and other monk you start to go in that road so then he just keep going and what happened in the, you know the somewhere in the the middle of that journey there were gangsters and gathered and you know he called up to these gangsters group of thieves you know this oh they all beat up this monk and look is there any valuable things to take you know even break his breaking ball and you know and took everything that whatever he had even that the, the his robe you know they took now he don't have, even have a robe and a broken breaking ball you know whole body you know damaged and he came back to buddha so when he came back remember this buddha never mentioned the previous argument 
that is that is one thing you know just imagine if somebody if somebody have an argument with you and did something wrong and if something happened and come back to you what you tell mostly i told you see i told you not to do this see what happened to you but the buddha never told like that and then the buddha said something else and what the buddha said the buddha said even though we know sometimes the surface level of the road and according to necessary conditions and according to necessary environment necessary places things can change so that is the the recognizing that is the vipassana knowledge so maybe you know you know from here to go to la you know from your place to go to this place or that place you know how to go but that knowing not going to bring the completion of your journey or your experience it is a moment by moment you have to fulfill that each and every time maybe you went yesterday but when you go tomorrow that doesn't mean oh i i did it yesterday i can do it too, tomorrow no you always have to remember the tomorrow whatever you do it's a completely new situation even though it look like same it's completely new situation so then don't repeat your past imagination past experience comparison to the this this moment and at the same time if there is somebody with you like your parents you know see the what the buddha and you have this all the sutras and the teachings so you have to know and what you should do what you should not do so we already there's nothing in this human world there's nothing can add to our life to gain deeper and wisdom because already we we all have the the all the teachings there's nothing to add so the only thing is you have to have the faith you have to have the conviction and the trust and 100% acceptance with what the buddha said that's it and once you come to that point and when when the, if there is something that if there is any question come to you any difficulties come to you and and if there is any unclarity so it is okay to argue question but you have to have the faith otherwise even there is not going to be a argument if you don't look for the truth so then remember in this spiritual path and sometimes we look for the wisdom you know we look for the wisdom we like the liberation we look for the transformation you know we look for the nibbana and it mostly it's like this it's kind of like you stretching that you you kind of like stretching your foot putting the the shoes on no it doesn't feel anything but it is there is a action there so same like that ourselves we look for the wisdom and the 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 change or the liberation inside us but 
with the self-centered mind with our own self-experience we don't allow to disturb to that self-experience we protect it in that protection in that environment we try to do things if anybody head massage, head massage that ego then mostly we like it oh that is good i like that but you have to look yourself and see what you like who like it inside who is like it from where that like came because when it come to the, the the real truth when you see the real truth when you slowly harmonize with the real truth you get out of both good and bad and you get out of from the darkness and the light you get out of from the left and right and you just become silence you just experience and that's why recognizing the self inquiring the self investigating the self observing the self is the most highest wisdom but mostly what we does concreting and developing the self and holding the self we try to look around the world and then we what we see we, we see the reflection of our own imagination or our own self so when it come to the wisdom seeing yourself is the the most important and when it come to that and one time that the dimension what you have to see what you gain as the ultimate wisdom so when it come to that recognizing the form or the rupa or the form as it is and what is this form how this arise is one thing that is a part of the wisdom so this all forms related to the food so whatever the food you eat what whatever the food you gain as satisfaction it nourishes you that's why you you have this form yourself so if you change the, the, the food that you intake physically and mentally, emotional food and the physical food, if you change that both, what will happen? You will change yourself. Just imagine that uh, the, this physical eye, how this physical eye depends? the food you eat so if you don't eat like uh, four or five days what will happen you you start to see kind of like a blurred you cannot see properly you feel dizzy and at the same time when you die there's a desire or the whatever that the desire hold in your last thought if that desire related to seeing or the experience and that will help you to gain this side so one way it's slowly nourishing this physical body it's nourishing with the the food it's and at the same time there is a psychological food our imagination the feelings the desires to see also nourish this eye and so that is how the, the this this whole forms arise so your eye ear nose tongue body mind depending from the food that is the beginning point so then in the spiritual path when you develop the discipline remember to to get into discipline with the food 
so that is something that you you going to slowly transform your deeper lifestyle once you change your food then you going to slowly change your life and not only the physical food and then slowly the psychological food so once you slowly drop what you visualizing dreaming thinking and that will slowly help you to to change that what you experience what you think you become so just then imagine in a certain level you come to a point to slowly little by little little by little completely change the way you think what will happen the way you become completely change and not only that that arising now you see in the arising of the form and then the another part of the wisdom when you able to see the arising of the wisdom that wisdom not you not that uh, having this wisdom you cannot go into the next one so when you have this wisdom when you see how it arise you gain another wisdom how it disappear and sometimes we don't know how it arise and we try to see how it disappear and then we have only the doubt so this there is a method mechanism in the beginning if you are a, if you are practice from the beginning that's why right. learn how it arise and then that will help you to to reverse the mechanism it's like when you want to when you develop the reverse mechanism first thing so whatever the machine you have to know how it function that understanding will help you to reverse that mechanism if you if there is a mecha, there is a machine you if you don't know how it function what is the outcome how you can reverse the that mechanism so same thing when you recognize how this form arise that wisdom will show you the disappearance of the form and now you have the both two kind of wisdom arising of the form disappearance of the form and then that will help you to gain the knowledge why we clinging to this form see once you see how the form arise it because it, it it's mainly related with the food two kind of food physical and psychological so in the physically that whatever the intake you take with your mouth and the psychologically whatever you think and that's why all this form arise all these forms came out of the physical strength and the, the before it come to this world it was in their mind as imagination so then once you have it you can see how it disappear how it go away and once you see these two things then you gain another wisdom and why you clinging to this what is the reason when there is a form why we have the desire to go with it or why we resist it you can see that you going to gain that wisdom and that is where you come to a complete total understanding this is nothing to do with this self it is a result of cause and effect causality and you see that even when there is good food you go you going to have the the good eyesight 
See that it depends your eyesight depending from the food you take. And, and not only that, then according to the, the thoughts that you have, and again, that whatever the desire or the whatever you're going to see, that also going to change. See, it depending from the, the cause and effects. And then there is no different kind of power or the, the self holding you. So you, you start to untangle it inside your mind. And then the, now you see how it arises, how it disappears, and then you see the desire, why we clinging to the form. And when you recognize this, all the three things, there's another wisdom come to you. And that wisdom is, it called the dosa, that mean if you clinging to any form and what is the the demerits or the in improfitable how it going to be improfitable for you and how it going to be effect for you in a bad way why it saying this clinging is not good now you can understand that. So just imagine, if you don't see what is, uh, how the form arise, and how you can understand, if you cannot see how it arise, how you can understand and recognize the clinging to the form is not good. See, that, that is the thing that even we don't know sometimes what is the world and then, but we think, oh, holding to world is not good. If, if you don't know what is the world, how you can understand the other part. So like that in the here, the, the, when this path of the wisdom, it giving you the wisdom or the knowledge first, what is the rupa the, or the form, how it arise, how it disappear, what is the meaning of clinging and why it say that you should not clinging to this. Then you can see. And then once you see that, naturally you start to recognize the, the path to exit from the, the form. When the form arises in you, when you experience any kind of thoughts in you, rather than clinging to it, you slowly allow it to disappear itself. How? Because you can see in the very bottom of this life, whatever you see, it is just see. Whatever hear, it is just hearing. Whatever smell, it's just a smell. Whatever feel as taste, it is just a taste. Whatever you feel as sensation, it is just a sensation. Whatever come to your mind as thought, it is just a thought. But what happened? Once you hold that, whatever you see here, smell, taste, feel, or thought, once you hold it, and you keep thinking about it, and keep going around it, and wrapping it, all the thoughts around it, and that is where it become part of your life. So then look at your life back a little bit. See, so far in your life, where, I, where that life? So whatever happens there, it happened there, it's gone. And whatever you saw, it saw, it's gone. And whatever you heard, that what it heard, it gone. Whatever you smell, it, it's gone. That's why you already keep eating. It's, it's keep going. And the feeling that the, 
So whatever you felt, it disappeared. And whatever thoughts came to you, it gone. And so what you experience today, remember, it also going to have the same nature. So the thing is, now we, we just comparing to past and understand and try to understand it. But there is a way when it happened in this very moment, there is a way that you can see. It. And when you are able to come to that point, that is where you gain the real wisdom. So then remember yourself, your ancestors, your forefathers, your grand grandparents, your grandparents, your grandparents, fathers, your parents, you know, contribute to this human world and try to protect you and give this life to you and, and protect this path of wisdom. And they preserve this wisdom for you to gain. Maybe they, they, could, they didn't get it, but still they push you forward. They push you a little bit forward. So then it is your responsibility to experience this truth. Why? Because when you able to experience this truth, you're going to be in your bloodline. You come to the the highest level. So then remember yourself. At least try to get very clear understanding, foundation yourself with your mind. And little by little, little by little, start to develop this wisdom. And then as parents, before you leave this world, remember, at least try to contribute to the human the next human civilization, next generations, and give this as a gift to your children. Look at you can give the money, you can give house, you can give the wealth, many things, but it 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 not it's nothing. But if you are able to give this as a gift they also go, will experience the highest in their journey of this life. But to give that, at least you have to see something. So then it is your responsibility, first level, and try to get it. And then whenever you have opportunity, passes it to the next. And then when the day come for you to leave this world, and you will be happy. Why? Because you have done all your parts. You have done all your duties. You gained it and you gave it to others and you share your wisdom. So I hope this message will resonate with you. And with that, I bless upon everyone with this good practice. May all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. So especially during this time period, we wish support and transfer the marriage to your beloved fathers. If they're living with you or far away from you, may they have the good health and the longevity and safety. And at the same time, if they passed away, we transfer the marriage to your beloved father and if they're living in a low existence, may they be able to attain to high existence. If he's living in a high existence, may he able to attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. And by the power of this all meritorious activities, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbhityo vajjantu sabbaro govinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhidi gayuko bhava. Ittavata chami hi sampadan punya sampadan sabbe deva numodan to sabba sampati siddhya sabbe buta numodan to sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodan to sabba sampati siddhya 
इदम मे पुण्य कमंगू सब दुख पंच तू ब्लेस यू